Austin, and you're listening to Podcast and Amplify, a podcast for women entrepreneurs who want to amplify their voice and brand through podcasting and grow a wildly successful business. I'm the executive producer and host of two shows and an entrepreneur, and I love helping women grow their visibility, mindset, and business to the next level. Each week, I share tips on how to launch and leverage your podcast, and I'm bringing on the very best business leaders to give you advice on how to build your business empire. Let's amplify your voice and business. Hey there, welcome back to Podcast and Amplify. Today, we are going to be talking all things public speaking and I think not just the typical way a lot of people talk about public speaking. I feel like my guest has a different uh, approach to it, which I'm really excited to dive into. So my guest today is Yvonne Armenta. She's a public speaking creative, and she's the founder of Chats with Yvonne, a space where she helps Latinas and introverts uh, reconnect with and love the art of public speaking. She's a keynote speaker. She's spoken at conferences. She definitely brings her lens of being a first-gen Latina, older sister, mujer in tech to her public speaking journey. So welcome, Yvonne. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and obviously nerd out about public speaking because these thoughts, anytime I get an opportunity to be on a, on a podcast or talk about public speaking, I'm really thankful because these are thoughts that live in my mind just already. I'm like, it's, I'm happy I can get them out. <laughs> so I'm really excited to be here. I think I so identified with you, you know, being a Latina and being an introvert. I'm like, oh, she's speaking my language. <laughs> but before we dive in, what's a pivotal moment that got you to this place that you're in today that that helped you become um, someone who supports others in public speaking? You know, it really starts for me in high school. My high school was a project-based learning curriculum, which meant that in conjunction with the testing and everything that we do normally in school, we also had to present a combination of some of our best work. And that's what we would use to pass on to the next grade. So my project My presentation was featured on the teaching channel, and then I was granted the opportunity and said, hey, do you want to keynote this this conference? It's all for educators and teachers to learn a little bit more about your experience. And so I always say that I learned by doing. I simply, you know, the introvert in me, the first gen Latina in me was like, well, I can't pass up this opportunity to do something that feels really big in a major way. I haven't seen anyone from my community do this in this way. So I have to say yes. I almost felt pressured to say yes. And the, again, going back to the first gen Latina introvert in me, I sort of just figured it out. I've always felt like I'm in a world full of extroverts, which I'm learning is not necessarily the case, but I've always felt like the spaces that I'm in reward extroversion. And I've always felt like I needed to be a little bit more extroverted. So the introvert in me accepted that opportunity. And I just figured it out. I would watch YouTube videos. I watched countless uh, speeches. I thought about story to elements of storytelling, which I've always really liked writing. And so I found a way to connect writing and public speaking to be one and the same. The very first time I used note cards and I was not afraid to look down at them, right? Um, but the reason why I started Chats with Yvonne was there was a, a little bit of a gap in between where I dedicated myself to my full-time career. And within that, I got the opportunity to host a virtual talk show. And this was around 2020, right? So they asked me, hey, Yvonne, do you want to do this? And I said, again, same feelings. I don't know if I want to, but I said, yes, this feels like a great opportunity. And every time that I did it, I was reminded of how much I loved it, but how much of a process and how much it took from me to actually get to the point of interviewing and speaking. And so I thought, hmm. What if I share not only my experiences with public speaking, but also give people tips from my perspectives as someone that ne- doesn't hasn't necessarily gone through the public speaking trainings and someone that doesn't necessarily speak like who I see on stage. I am an introvert through and through, and I get a lot that you don't seem like one, right? But I think it's because of these misconceptions that people have about introverts. So 
my journey really started with, I want to share this because I want to see if there's anybody else out there that feels this way. And I also know how empowering it is to go up on stage. And once you're done after you feel really good about it. Yeah. I think a lot of us do tend to start things where we're like, I don't see myself and I'm just going to create the thing that I want to see. And, and hopefully that it will connect with others and land with others. Um, what I hear in your story too, is that you've said yes to a lot of things, even a lot of opportunities, even when you felt hesitation, maybe some fear, but you showed up anyways. And it's those experiences that you build on your confidence, right? And get you to that next level or your next, you know, iteration of where you want to be. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of people say, you know, it's, it's when you do the things that scare you that you really grow. And I think it's so cheesy to, to say it, but it is very true. Now, just as much as there have been things that I, that I've said yes to that have helped me grow, there have been things that I've said yes to that maybe I shouldn't have said yes to. Right. But they, all of those things do come together to, if I had not said yes to that first opportunity or felt a little pressured to do it, I probably wouldn't even have found out that I truly love and enjoy public speaking and I want to help other people love it too. Yeah. The successes and the losses, I mean, it's all just information, right? And it helps to inform your next decision. So let's talk about how you define public speaking, because I think you have a different approach to it. Yeah. So my definition of public speaking at its very, in its very simplest form is storytelling because my work revolves around making people feel comfortable with the art of public speaking. I really approach it from the sense of you do it every day, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, whether it's a meeting that you're facilitating at work, whether it's the story that your abuelita, that your grandma is telling you, right? You are picking up best practices for public speaking in those interactions. And so I define public speaking as storytelling and anytime that you're connecting with someone through the spoken word. I love that because so much of the idea of a public speaker, I feel like is not entertaining, but it's like being on, like being extra and just being, <laughs> you know, a flash and a sparkle. And really you're so right. It comes back to, Yes, they may have all those things, but if they don't have substance or they're not taking you on a journey, you're going to leave that feeling the emptiness. Cause I felt that before where I'm like, wow, this person's so dynamic. And then I've left and thought, what did I really just sit through? Can I say that I love that you bring that up because at one point, maybe two or three years ago, um, actually maybe three years ago. I would go to conferences and I would think about, okay, I felt really motivated by this, but then I'm not able to do anything afterwards, right? And this is why I think that introverts have such an incredible power when they are on stage, because naturally we think about things a little bit more deeply before we actually say anything. We don't want to say something to your point without substance. And so because of that very trait that we have, it's that when we get on stage, we're not only going to be able to leave people with the motivation and the inspiration the day of, but we actually give people tactical things to go do. We give people the inspiration and motivation with actionable steps. And that's a huge thing for me as a public speaker. I don't want to say things just to say them. I don't want to say inspiring words just to say them. I want them to mean something and for you to actually go and do something with them. And I really think that that's the power of introverts as public speakers. Oh, absolutely. I, I so hear what you're saying because I know for me, my worst nightmare is if I go and speak in front of people and they get nothing from it, like that horrifies me. And I think it's that introvert, right? Where you just, like you're saying, you, you really think things through and you want to be intentional and have the impact. And I just think it's great to like get people pumped in the moment, but I think what's more impactful is when you help them shift in the moment, right? Like if you, when you listen to someone and you're like, oh, they spoke a truth to me and it moved my heart or it moved something within me. And that's something you carry with you outside of that, yes. that uh, presentation. But it's 
it's difficult. We, we have some ideas about public speaking and who is a public speaker that I think we need to dismantle. And I'm so glad that you're helping to do that and helping to uh, reframe it and shine a light on other oh, different types of uh, public speakers. Um, so what are some of the factors that can influence like how we see ourselves when it comes to public speaking? We just touched on it a little bit about some of the misconceptions about, oh, this is the only type of person that can speak. Well, one of those things is actual representation, right? Which I've talked about before and being that, well, I don't feel like I'm seeing anybody that talks like me, that moves their hands around like me. <laughs> Culturally, I'm not connecting with, with folks that I see on stages or at these conferences that I'm a part of. And so you can begin to feel a little bit disconnected to public speaking or feel like you have to show up like those people do to be able to have a spot on stage. So I think representation is the very first one. But then once you get the opportunity, and I'll say this you know, if you are in a position right now where you're engaging with the art of public speaking, you're getting these speaking opportunities and you're looking to YouTube or you're looking to best where you're reading around best practices, it can feel a little bit like it's asking you to be somebody that you're not. If those things that you see on stage to our point, right? If you see an what appears to be an extrovert on stage and they're bold, they're big, and maybe that feels like it doesn't necessarily connect with you. That can make you feel like, well, one, I have to show up that way. So it's super uber draining to then have to act that way, knowing that my style is a little bit different. But also as an introvert, no matter what, you're going to feel a little bit drained after that, that entire interaction. But it, it just creates this relationship with public speaking that isn't sustainable. I, at the very beginning, I think I tried to do a little bit of that. I tried to be more like what I saw on stage or more like what I saw was being exemplified on YouTube videos that I saw, that I watched. And it wasn't until I was really like, this is just not my style. Like, this is how I need to show up because I love public speaking and I want it to be a sustainable thing that I can keep up with. If I have to continually feel like I just need to be out here and bold and do all these little things where, oh, you're not supposed to do this and don't do too much of that, then I'm just not going to have fun with it. And that's not good for anybody because I have something, you have something, everybody has something to say. And if we don't feel comfortable in saying it, we're just not going to show up properly and do our, our passion justice. And I want to share something. Recently, I went to, I was at an event and there was an opening speaker and she was very different, a very different style for me. I'm speaking for myself here, but they were both really effective, right? And I overheard a comment from someone in the audience and said, wow, they both have such different styles, but you know, you really cared about what they were talking about and really resonated with each one of their words. And that's what's beautiful about the space of public speaking is you can truly be yourself and you will connect with, with somebody. So it's representation, it's lack of feeling connected to who's who's on stage to me that really deviates us from from connecting with our public speaking. Yeah. And I think you bring up a good point too, of it's not necessarily that extroverted out there dynamic presenters, speakers, that, that they can't be effective. It's really about opening up more lanes for everyone to feel like they can come in and be themselves because that's really what's going to connect with audiences, right? Is when people see you being like your authentic self, they're going to be like, oh, I, I get this person and it's not really about the delivery. It's about like, how are they making me feel um, like that saying? It's how you make people feel. Yeah. It's not what you say. It's like how you say it. And it's like about the sentiment that people get from it. Yeah, totally. I mean, if we go back to the definition of public speaking and it being about storytelling and connection, we can all do that. Yeah, we all have a story, our own unique stories. You had a post recently about um, chisme and how that helped you be a good storyteller and that really made me laugh because um I never thought a bit about it that way but just like how you you know you hear people tell stories and that is a form of storytelling but all of these things that like you can draw from in your life that you may not think of exactly I mean and yeah this is what I do all day long I'm like don't worry you're public speaking right now like you th you think you're really nervous about it but like you do it all the time <laughs> right <laughs> Um, and then, so what are some misconceptions around introverts and when it comes to public speaking? 
I think the very first one that comes to mind is that we are shy and that has always been one that I think I almost started to accept as being part of my personality because I was confusing being shy with being a little bit more reserved. And so when you're shy, people equate that to you not liking interaction with people as much or being a little bit more socially awkward when that's not the case. We as introverts just need our own, our me time. I call it me time. I always wondered why I always needed that time. Even when I was little, I even just, I loved being by myself. It, I've never felt lonely in my own company. <laughs> I love it. And it always felt like everyone was like, are you okay? Is something wrong with you? Are you sad? I was like, no, I just like being by myself. And that is one of the biggest misconceptions that I think stems into and goes into why people may feel like introverts are not or cannot be as great of public speakers is we feel like they think, or we as introverts don't like talking to people. We're shy. We couldn't possibly go up on stage, but really it's just, we need some time to reflect by ourselves in quiet, to think before we speak. Uh, we, we love and are recharged by one-on-one -on -one interactions are probably our most favorite kinds of, of interactions that we have, but it doesn't mean that we can't go on stage because what we like and what we crave about those one-on-one -on -one interactions is that connection piece. And so if we're able to do that in audience with a thousand or however many other people, we're, we're that much more happy. It also just means that at the end of that interaction, it's funny, I, I go to a lot of networking events and I always tell people, I have, a, I have to do a lot of mental preparation to make it here. Like I almost have to not scare myself into do it, but doing it really scared. I just sign up for stuff. I'm like, I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to sign up for the networking event. I bought my ticket. I'm going to attend. And then when I get there, I have so much fun and I love interacting with people. But then afterwards, I'm like, Ooh, I'm hungry. Ooh, I need to go chill out by myself and not talk to someone for the next seven days. So that misconception around us being shy and not really liking people interaction it is totally not true. It may be true for some people. It may be true for, for some extroverts too. <laughs> but that, that is one of the misconceptions that I see come up the most when it comes to how it relates to the, to the art of public speaking. I can't tell you how excited I was when I learned that Oprah was an introvert. <laughs> because I was like, yes, yes, she is an introvert. And she's like connecting and speaking in front of millions of people. And she defines, I guess, the the introvert public speaker, right? Because she can speak to the masses, but she also needs time to be on her own and recharge. So the two things are not like mutually exclusive. <laughs> it's not a one or the other. It's yeah. actually can be really complimentary. Yeah. I love, I love that too, because if you write Oprah started with a talk show and she has a live audience in front of her. And then now I think she does a little bit more of like one-on-one -on -one interviews and, you know, not as much of a live audience. Right. So I also would love introverts to even think about the ways that we, you know, because I, I imagine maybe Oprah would have loved to, to start like the one-on-one -on -one interviews before and then maybe transition to that or who knows right who knows how she how her experience went but I like to prompt introverts to think about the ways that we're showing up because we think that the rest of the world wants us to show up this way right you know she's an incredible public speaker she's an incredible talk show host and at the same time I wonder like me did she take an opportunity because she was like this was too good to to pass up and I need to show up as more of an extrovert in this space to get my foot in the door. It, it's so interesting to me. So I, I prompt you all, if you're an introvert out there, to think about the ways that you are not necessarily leaning into your introversion and what's that, what that's doing to, to you, like to you, the person. It, it may be giving you all these opportunities. You may, you know, feel like you're getting opportunities to speak in, in the rooms or whatever it is, but what is that doing to you and how draining is that? And because I know it is draining, make sure that you're taking care of yourself in some way. Yeah, definitely. You know, I know when I've done public speaking, there's a whole process, like there's a pre process, there's like a preparation, and then there's the post speaking and like recharging. And it's like, there is a, a probably a higher level of self care that has to happen. Um, but that's okay. You just factor that into the experience. And I think for introverts too, it's really important to make sure you pick the right places to speak. 
it's not everywhere is going to be the right fit. And I think if you can be talking about something that you really, really believe in, first of all, and then second, if it, if you make sure it's the right opportunity, I think those are ways to really honor like who you are and save your energy. Um, and so then how can we gain a new perspectives around, you know, just building that confidence when it comes to public speaking? What are some strategies maybe that you've used? I always like to ask people to think about the very first time that they engaged with the art of public speaking. Like, what did that feel like? What did that look like? Because that tends to inform how we experience public speaking today. A lot of how I have learned to gain confidence in public speaking, and there are some days where I still don't feel as confident. I'm like, what am I doing? We all go through those, right? So it's not to say this is going to fix everything, but reflection has become really important in how I think about public speaking because it allows me to recognize that it's not just about me. It's about the world around me. It's about the different experiences that I've had. And I tell people that the way that you speak, your tone, your body language, all these tactical things and best practices for public speaking, I don't know if people are going to agree with this, but those almost come secondary to me. I really think that to gain confidence in public speaking, you have to understand who you are as a speaker, who you want to be. So that reflection piece really helps out and thinking about that first interaction that you had or what does public speaking make me feel? In what spaces have I been really good, good at public speaking? In what spaces have been have I been probably terrible or maybe I stuttered more than I wanted to or maybe I used too many filler words or I was just feeling really anxious about it? Analyze the spaces that you're a part of. And then after we do that, we can create action items for, okay, I know that in this space, I don't feel as comfortable, but I have to public speak or I have to say something. Then I can build my own little toolkit for that scenario. I know that when I'm in a, in a room full of women, I feel really empowered. So maybe this is the way that I prepare for that. So it, it really is about finding, almost fine tuning your own unique style to the situation. And, and I think us as introverts are kind of good at doing that. We kind of mold to whatever is, is happening. We're able to prepare if we're able and given enough time to prepare. As an introvert, that's really helped me gain confidence because I think, okay, well, I'm prepared for this situation. Understanding that there will always be things that pop up that may not be as, as ideal but you at least controlled what you could control. And everything that you can control is the before, the public speaking, the preparation, the internal work that you have to do. That's really what I think will, will help you get confidence in public speaking. Lastly, is just actually doing it, the practice. The reflection piece is the hard part. The preparation piece is the hard part. Once you're up there, you do it, you reflect on it afterwards again, you start the cycle all over again. You think, wow, I really actually kind of love that. Or you know what? That was not the ideal situation for me. You're able to, to your point earlier, get information about who you are as a public speaker and what makes you feel good and what makes you feel not so good about it. Yeah, I love gathering that information and connecting it back to how you feel because introverts also are usually empathetic and yeah. our feelings and our energy, something we have to pay attention to. So what is your go-to prep process. I'm curious, like, what does that look like for you to get ready for that next speaking event? It's different every time, but one of the things that remains consistent is this breathing exercise, like tuning into my breath and just breathing right before. I try not to do anything related to what I'm about to go speak on maybe five minutes before. Sometimes, depending on what the, the speech or the presentation is, I will procrastinate on my preparation process because I understand, I know that I've done it before. So it's almost like this out of mind, out of sight kind of thing. And I almost, I'm just like, I choose not to think about it right before going up on stage. I'm like, okay, now I can go. But then there's other times where I do have an outline of what I'm going to say in my mind. I try not to memorize anything because that adds pressure to me as a, as a public speaker. I feel like if I think I have to say it this way, I'm going to go up there and mess up and get nervous because I get nervous when I'm up on stage. So I know that about myself. So what I do is I give myself ideas and topics, general points that I want to make and commit those to memory because I know to talk about them. We know everything. We, we have the knowledge to talk about what, we're, what we've been asked to talk about. We just need to organize it in our minds. So that organization piece of 
outlining things in my mind helps me. And then if I need to right before take a look at one last time, my outline, I do that. Sometimes if I'm really nervous right before going up on stage, oh, I have a notebook and I just write stuff. Whether it's writing things that are completely unrelated to what I'm about to do, whether it's a journal prompt, like an entry of I'm feeling really nervous, or I want to commit the first couple of sentences that I'm going to say to memory, I write those down. I find that when I start with a good foundation, the rest just sort of comes a little bit more naturally because I've practiced it. So I don't memorize, but I try to write down the things that I want to say at the very beginning so that I feel like I sound confident, but that so I also feel a little bit more confident. So it's a mixture of things and it varies, but definitely the the breathing really does help me right at the very beginning. I like the journaling right before. I think either it can help you sort of get out those jitters, you know, those nerves and kind of ground you, or it can be used as like a tool, like you're saying, to really memorize those opening lines or some lines that you you want. And yes, breathing I found is so important, just connects you to your body and gets you that calmness because those nerves, they're real, they're, they're there. And it's just a way to kind of help manage them. I haven't found any other be- better way than breathing. Yeah, no, I haven't either. And I will also say, I I don't like to admit this because it's not a really good thing, but I like can't eat. I can't drink anything because I'm just like so nervous and consumed with the idea of going up on stage. But I have promised myself that I'm going to test out eating something and drinking stuff before going up on stage just to see how I feel because I find that after I'm done, I'm like, oh my gosh, all these feelings just come back to me. I'm like, okay, I'm a real person now out in the world that needs food and water. So I would also suggest having a bite to eat before you go up on stage. Yeah, just a little, you know, a little bit. You want to stay hydrated, of course. You know what I do is I chew gum Mm. right before I go on because I think it's a stress reliever. It's like something that I like that. Yeah, it feels like a stress reliever to me because it's an activity, but I'm not actually eating because like you, I'm not super hungry either because of the nerves. But then I have to remember to spit it out before (laughs) I speak because... No one wants to, you know, someone smacking gum while they're speaking. Um, That's a big faux pas. But before we hop off, what's one thing that we can do like today to dial up our public speaking? I would say write down the things that come to mind throughout the day. Right. So, and the reason I say that is because I myself have a lot of thoughts that happen through my mind all the time. I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. So I write that down. And then you can, based on that, at the end of the, your day or at the next day, the very beginning of your of your morning, think about how you would talk about it and just talk about it to yourself. Right. And then maybe eventually take that and practice it with somebody else. But you have thoughts throughout the day that really impact the way that you talk about other things throughout your day, if that makes sense. So everything is interconnected. So writing something down, deciding to do maybe a three minute speech without preparation, just talking about it, because these are things that are on your mind. I think that gets you to practicing the thoughts that come across your mind that will likely come across your mind when you're public speaking, like on a stage. Sometimes when we're on stage, or this happens to me a lot, I'll say something And that actually prompts a different thing that I didn't necessarily have in my outline, but I think is important to say in the moment. And though I haven't rehearsed it or practiced it, knowing that I've done that before helps me come up with something while I'm up on stage that doesn't sound like I didn't prepare for it. So practice being unprepared. (laughs) Yeah, I love that take on it. And yes, my notes app is always like full on my phone because I really don't like when I have a thought and then it leaves and like I know it'll probably come back again if it's meant to but like that's the most frustrating thing where you're like oh I agree always write down your thoughts (laughs) yes and then what would you say to those out there who haven't necessarily seen themselves represented in the public speaking space and they don't feel like they belong up there what would you say to them as far as maybe some encouragement or um, yeah, like why they should, why they do belong? I love this question because it prompts me to think about imposter syndrome. And my definition of that changes all the time, just based on community interactions and conversations and new thought leaders coming into the space. And 
the first thing that I would say is accepting almost that these spaces weren't necessarily created with us in mind or with the idea that one day we would be able to take on the stage and tell our very own stories. But we are creating that. We're creating that together in community. So find your community, find the people that really activate the person that you're meant to be and wholeheartedly accept that. If you're an introvert, if you are an extrovert, an ambivert, somewhere in between, Latina, first gen, find your community Let them know what you want to do. Talk to them about your dreams and your aspirations and find a way to make that happen. There are going to always be spaces, unfortunately, that we don't feel like we belong in or that we feel a part of. And in those moments, we get to decide, you know, we we don't have to be a part of them. We can create our own or we if we want to be a part of them, we get to choose how we show up. We get to choose to show up authentically. So find your community and keep showing up. I love it. And so please tell us what your superpower is. (laughs) Yeah, my superpower is being able to connect our lived experiences back to how and why we experience the art of public speaking to hopefully ground us in who we are and who we want to become as public speakers and gain confidence in the art. Obviously, we can tell that from this conversation here that it's your superpower for sure. And then how can people find out more about you? You can find me across all platforms, Chats with Yvonne, uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. If you would like to connect, I have a website coming out very soon. So all of the information will be on there. Chats, check out the Chats with Yvonne podcast where I dive into a little bit more about public speaking. I, I like to call it public speaking con cultura. And I also have an affirmations podcast. It's called the Punta Terra Affirmations Podcast if you want to check that one out. And reach out to me via DMs. My email is chatswithyvonne at gmail.com, but my website will have all of that information for you all to, to connect with me. Great. And we will link to all of those things in the show notes. Yvonne, thank you so much for being here. And I think really inspiring us and empowering us to, no matter how we identify ourselves to, you know, see ourselves as public speakers. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. This was such a pleasure. And now my day is made and I will have a great day the rest of the day. (laughs) Yay, I love to hear that. All right, thank you everyone for listening and we'll catch you in the next episode. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. So if you found this episode really valuable, I'd love for you to head on over to Instagram and share your big takeaways, any aha moments that you had and tag me at podcast and amplify. If you have any questions, make sure to hit me up in the DMs. And if you have any friends or fellow entrepreneurs who you think would get a ton of value from the show, make sure to share this episode with them. Your recommendations and your reviews are really what help grow this podcast. And we are always so grateful for your support. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.